Welcome back to the Alice area. Myself is still going to be on here for a little while longer. We just witnessed Forever taking the win over the Mafia team. But at the moment, as you can see, in-game right now, the new Esports Live Hub is available. Make sure you check that out. You can buy the Battle Pass for that and continue to earn even more points for the Viewer Point Store. And you can get yourself that Odin skin by just linking your account in chat and making sure you can do that. Not only that, but in that Esports Bundle area, you can also find team-specific items for the SPL so you can support your favorite teams. Make sure you check it all out now. Joining me on the casual set once again, though, is the one and only Gormizy. So I'm dancing away during the break. You're all dancers. I don't know. Where do you all get that energy from? I, you know, it's weird, but I feel like it's something I've just had the entire time. Like, since I've been hired, that's, like, when me and Gabby would cast Hand of the yeah. Gods, when we would cast Paladins. Like, it's just every cast I've been on, the music will be playing. And it'll be like, what else can I do right now? Like, well, I need to be in position, so I'll just it's dance. It's definitely infectious because Dolson's doing it and Mifflin too oh, now. God. So it's getting a little bit too much. Let's have a little recap, though. All right, boys, calm it down. Come on, this is a professional show, this. Professional show. That's what we're getting paid for. Thank you. Okay, so we have a little look at there at for Ma Forever, who did find that victory over Chips Mafia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Longer game than it should have been, really. I mean, it felt like that yes. was dead at 20 minutes. It lasted 34, but yeah. Yeah, like the 21-minute mark, it was right Phoenix went down. They have Fire Giant. I think they were up two members. Like, it was a 5v3. And they were like, man, we should go get that tier two in mid just to be safe. Mm. And, like, I admire the safer play, but at the same time, it, it stretched out the game a little bit longer. I think Forever could have gone for the kill a little bit sooner. But they end up taking a little bit longer. That fire giant caused some trouble for them when it went the way of Chips Mafia, but it just, again, prolonged what was going to go their way anyway. Interesting stats page, this one, too, because I think what I saw at Chips Mafia here, I don't mind their picks and ban section. I don't mind some of their item choices, but I do think the choices of where they pick those items definitely cause them issues. Scylla was very low on the player damage there, less than 17,000. Yes. But then again, Mass Kill, who was on forever and did a very good job, was also low on player damage, but his damage seemed to be a little bit more effective. As, yeah, that's exactly what it is, where it's just like, you know what, the number doesn't need to be big if every single bit of the damage was converted to kills, yeah. right? And that's kind of where you have to look at the KDA plus the damage done because he was absolutely tearing through people whenever he got it. And a lot of times it was moments like that where Hunbats is left alone and he can just go forward with it. He had the Arendite, which made it so much easier to chase yeah. down those single target kills as well. So it's just like, cool, hey, where's Hunbats? I'm going to go get play, rid of him and save my team. This play right here was the difference maker for that next fire giant. It was a five minutes away from the end. Doesn't surprise me there. I do want to give some credit to Chips Mafia here, though. For me, Ozzy played that really well from that gut position. His team was like five levels down. At first, I was kind of surprised by the Prid win so early, but it made a lot of sense. And this was the play, funny enough, where we saw the Scylla and the Geb combo on the defense that kind of delayed the game a little bit more so with how this one went on. And look at this Baron clip real quick. How do you think the Baron did that game? Honestly, he held his own. I don't think he did anything that was so stellar that made me say, yes, yeah. lock in Baron every game. But he did what he needed to. In fact, early on, he was kind of getting bullied. And it just kind of showcases in a similar conversation to the Scylla that... Baron can work and you can make him fit, but do you have to play him exactly. when there's other mages that do it a little bit better? That's true. That's true indeed. Credit the way it's due, though, to Forever. They're going to move on. Chips Mafia, a little bit further behind. I think I kind of agree with Mifflin here. Forever has definitely got more work to do for themselves. Yes, They're going to sure. get through that group stage and looking back at what they did there, they could definitely find some areas of improvement. We're going to move on now to the other quarterfinal we're going to show you today. It's going to be 60 up against Hive Central. Now, this is uh, two interesting teams. One, Hive Central. Don't really know too many of the players here. Been around a long time, trust me. I don't really recognize many names. We'll see how they do. But on the other side, it's 60. And this is pretty much some of the Xbox console Europeans that did very well for themselves through the years. Vaporish Coast, Dobson, Turtle on this team. And that's, I think, the biggest thing. If anything, you should recognize Vaporish Coast because he was yeah. able to get a Penta in competitive, and that happens so infrequently that oh, yeah. it's always worth note. It doesn't matter whether it happened on console PC. It's a Penta in Smite in a competitive game. Those are difficult to come by. So him alone is a really big name to have on this. But with Dobson, with Turtle, and the two other guys coming in to kind of help fill out this roster, 60 are showcasing what I think is a team that in week two, even week one, 
should have been able to qualify. So I'm kind of curious to see what they're offering here in week three. Well, we'll get to look at some of the other f semi-final games later on as well, funny enough. And like, there's some teams in those that should have got through in week yeah. one too. So been a bit of a tougher task in Europe at the moment to be getting to pick some bands now. 60 definitely favorites going into this against Hive then. It's going to be the Kukulkan, 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 whatever you want to say. It's the Snake Lizard with Wind. Yeah, that one. Yeah. And get rid of him. He's so good. The tornado, it's so weird they because it's, this, it's so many great. small changes. Every time I mess something up, I will go out to dinner, have a conversation like with Katie or something, and I'll like stumble over my words. I'll pause for a second and be like, I get paid to talk for a living, and it's All just the time. so difficult to speak. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. Kukulkan <laughs> and then Persephone. Or as I saw a new streamer who's not played Smite before was streaming last night, right? You know what she, she called it? Purse phone. Purse phone. I, you know what? Purse phone. And I you like it. Let's make that a skin. Purse phone. I mean, that's what it says when you read the name out. It yeah. says purse phone. <laughs> True. Right? I never and thought I'm about like, that. Okay. Wait a minute. Makes, Hold it, on. makes a lot of sense if you don't know the mythology of it, right? Odin huh. also banned away. Not surprised to see these Odin bands still coming through thick and fast now. People really started to realize he's very impactful. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, again, it comes down to how impactful a cage can be and, and a lot of things that could be really fun. But it's a ranged stun that is all you really need on anybody to make them seem potent because it's just going to help set them up. It's perfect to go on a warrior as well where it's just like, cool, we can slot this in as a support if we need to and that makes our duo lane super aggressive. Or we can put them in solo still and now at any gank that comes through, you at least have some guaranteed CC. As you can see, there's a bit of an issue with the picks and bands. That's why I said earlier the messed up name of Kukulkan because I write the script and I didn't have that locked in as a first band. So that's why I'm very confused by that. It is going to be the Kamazots there, your Moja for Hive, and then back to Odin. So we fixed that up for you, all taken care of again. And actually, it's not Odin either, just to be clear. One second, my notes there says Morrigan. Can we get that yeah. changed, please? Thank you very much. So Morrigan, there we go, Kamazots and your Moja are the three so far. And at least with the first two, you knock off sustainability. Again, we talked last picks and bands mm. about how much Kamazots is just safe. He lives forever. and. If you can melt him down, that's awesome, but usually it's not often enough that you feel he's out of the game that long. Yamoja, I want to see her get through. I want to see her in the hands of some of those top teams, though, just because I want to know what she can provide at that level. Yeah. Because we don't get to see her that I, often. When she comes through, it's just so good CC. She's got good damage. I love her ultimate in terms of what it can do for setup, Flash. but we only get to see it once once a week so far has been the There right. we go. Purse foam. Top of the screen. Makes sense. That's how it's spelled, right? Hunt Bat's also banned away. I'm interested by the Thor huh. bank, because Thor, I think a competitive player can be very useful with that semi-global ultimate, right? Two CCs in this kit, yes. very effective. Nice. Difference is, though, he's started to fall from grace a yeah. little bit now. It's one of those moments that I think people are still lingering on what he was able to do yep. versus what we've seen him doing. In the last three weeks, he was a huge priority pick for yeah. a lot of teams. He's been a ban for a lot of teams, and he's lost a lot of games in that timeline as well. So. He's still present. I think, again, the semi-global ult really helps him. His yeah. setup is really good. His damage is still there, but it's less than what it used to be. And I think people are still kind of catching up to that because Thor has always been around. He's always been solid. I mean, so many of these pictures are holding his hammer. It's so important to have. Makes sense, but right? At the same time, he's just not not doing it so far. Well, Kukulka and Dodgy locked in for Hive, and I don't mind Dodgy up against Purse Phone here, just because I do like the idea of like she can do the jump back, but then Dodgy's like, okay, well, I can even jump towards you. Yeah. Or power out up and cause problems too. And there's Heimdall also locked in now. The rise of Geb's back once again. 6% big pick rate so far, 0% win rate. Well, it's what, oh, yeah. I have one, two games. Don't nerf him. He's fine. And I'm going to throw it out there. Those yeah, numbers, really mirror. misleading. Geb is yep, awesome. Yeah. I love Geb. I mean, his pass is really good, especially right now, considering how big crit has been. Just, hey, deal less damage to me. But with how important specifically CC is in a jungler's kit and what we've seen out of mid, not necessarily here for Kukul Khan, but from Ama, from what we're going to see so far from Hive's composition, Cool. I'm just going to shield you out of that. Palaz coming down. Cool. Be safe. You're not like you're fine. I'm going to keep you shielded. He's definitely more on the supporty end of Guardians as opposed to being aggressive, which I think is where like that dynamic comes through. Yeah. A lot of people love Warriors right now in that long lane just to get aggressive and get the fight going. But if you have a good Geb on your team, it changes everything. Amaterasu's a little bit flexible here. She could go into the support role. We've not seen too much of it just lately. But I'm just surprised by such an early pick of the Amaterasu at this stage for solo that it kind of gives a chance for 60 to answer that back quite effectively. Especially when Hive look towards the Susano and the Bastet bands in the jungle here. 
Whereas Sixty going to take away one of the carry options up against Heimdall, which will be that Jing Wei. And of course, making sure that, well, Jormungandr, they were worried about that, funny enough. Huh. Yeah, I was actually looking at that because I was like, well, in, in, in this composition, this lineup, I'm looking at Ama as the solo laner. So Yorm doesn't necessarily oh come God. to my cross. Yeah. I have Guardians to get rid of for Support. dual lane. Yeah. Unless they were thinking, oh, that's going to be a Matarasu support. We need to get rid of Yorm because they're still going to go for it. It at least eliminates and makes things a little more clear because it's just like, is this Ama guaranteed solo? Not going into that. Once you get rid of Yorm, there's not really anybody to swap with her over there. And that's my concern that I saw there with the Amaterasu pick so early. 60 going to go with Osiris on that solo lane more than likely here. A little bit of flexibility for Raven instead in the solo, but we'll probably see it being the Osiris. Yeah. Such a lane bully. And he's just so solid when it comes down to rotations as well. I love the way Osiris can control the lane, the way he is in team fights. He just sits in your back line and causes so much trouble. Well, with that 60 of favorites going into this one, let's get it over to the casters to see if Hive can make something happen. Appreciate it, Hindu man. And purse phone for Dobson Stop. makes her way. All right. <laughs> All right, Miff. No, no, no. Go ahead. Right. We're, we're giving you the, what was it? To the way in the last game, but you're gonna take away purse phone. From well, I us? guess that is a little unfair. Purse phone, <laughs> it is. Let's run with it. No, I, I will stop at some point. I just had to, <laughs> I had to carry it over at least into the cast. But Persephone, who is so often banned out, is gonna make her way into the mid lane this time around up against the Kukul Khan. Uh, what do you expect out of her? I mean, she is so potent, so very hard to play, but at a high mechanical level, she brings a lot of presence into that mid lane. So she can poke incredibly safely through just like any amount of range just about, as well as the plants can't be removed from the map. It's sure. very easy right. for her to land the plants onto Kukulkin, insofar as he doesn't have his second ability, the speed stem. Once he gets that online, it's going to be a little bit harder for him to find the damage. But Dobson's been playing this game competitively for a long time. Used to play on Rival uh, with Vaporish Coast yep. as well. The Penta Kid is what he's called. Uh, little known fact, that Penta, he did that to me and my squad. I got penta by a 14-year-old oh. as his father screamed at me from the crowd. <laughs> it was uh, no, go, demoralizing. Why don't you walk us, walk us through the penta? What happened there, Myth? So, like, he plays ADC, and yeah, uh, right. he, was, he was holding left click. Yep. And um, that's just about it. He, and he hit him. I, like I, he's doing right now. I appreciate the the amount of pride that had to be swallowed to walk us through that one, but <laughs> I even more so appreciate Goodness. that we put you on for this cast for the Porsche Coast debut here in the quarterfinals. They're going to make their way to groups. Nearly got first blood already. So often these duo lanes are just kind of back and forth poke, but this time around there is serious kill potential for 60 if they're able to kind of chain some of that CC and damage. Onto, uh, onto that Kumbakarna. Phoenix has to be careful here. He's half health. You saw what kind of an unchecked amount of damage was able to do from that Heimdall. Is there some serious kill potential there if you chain enough? Heimdall can kill just about anyone, but it's hard to do so. I think the player to keep your eyes on this match is Rico on the Robin. Sure. 60's got a lot of late game hyper carries on their team, so he needs to be using his huge early game pressure. Prana Assault, the one, going to be a little cone slow in front of him. He does so much damage on a little cooldown as well as he's got the beads Aegis built into his kit on the second oh, ability. Hachi is hanging out close by, and she's going to move her way right on top of that Heimdall, and that's going to be the Hachiman onto the board first. Well-timed rotation. You grab the red buff for your mid laner. You move down the long lane and get your hunter a kill. A great start here for Hive. Yep, uh, that's not what you want. I was just saying how Robin's going to need to be doing that in the early. Instead, first one's going to go the way of Hachiman. That's going to be rough. But if anyone's going to be able to fight into a fed ADC, it's Heimdall. It's ho so hard to aggress on a Heimdall when he's got that horn available. Yeah, why don't you just get away from me, please, and then I'll resume auto-attacking you here in just a moment. Now look over at the solo lane. There's a one-level lead up top there. Rotation through just yet down into the long lane. But Amaterasu, they pointed it out. They, uh, they elect to kind of pick her up early on in this pick ban phase. Do you like them going Amish? I feel like I've seen her prioritized at, at different tiers throughout the last few weeks, but obviously highly prioritized here for Hive. Ama is a very safe pick. She's kind of similar to Hunbots in the jungle. That's kind of what the role Ama brings to the soul lane. Yeah. That passive is so powerful, going to make objectives dropping so much more easy, as well as the aura on her one, going to bring movement speed, but Switch gets a little unfortunate DC there and falls for it. I can't fault Hive for that. It's a competitive game. Yep. You've got group stage on the line. I'm taking any kill I can get. In fact, I'm thankful for it. For all you know, Switch just stopped moving, right? I mean, <laughs> you don't know what happened there, I guess. 
But what they do know is they're going to grab the second kill in this long lane. This time Phoenix does snag the kill there. So you look at kind of the swap that this long lane has taken. Vaporish Coast was off to a roaring start, nearly getting a kill onto Phoenix to start off this game. But an early gank, and then a bit unfortunate there from Switch. Kind of flips this one around. Are you kind of approaching the point where you almost just want to leave and let your Heimdall farm himself up? If I'm Geb, I'm just trying to hit level 5 and then get out of that lane and let Vaporish do what Vaporish does, which is hold left click, as Penta I said kill, earlier. Yeah, yeah get, let him get a Penta <laughs> for the one time, and you're going to be sitting pretty. However, if I'm Hive, that's the player I'm looking to shut down, and they've effectively done it so yeah. far. It's uh, really on them now to start spreading that wealth elsewhere. The mid laner, Persephone, mm -hmm. that's someone you need online quickly as well. Her ultimate so potent in these team fights. Archie is looking for maybe his second gank turned kill in this game, but is not going to find it as Dobson moves his way out of that one. But you can already feel the impact that Archie is making on this game. Grabs a long lane gank and now moving his way into the mid. And you're right, not that Rico has done anything wrong. We just haven't quite seen as much of this Robin as we have the Daji. It's also interesting to point out his build. Normally you would see a Jotun's rush on Robin instead electing to go towards that Morningstar path. It could be a Hydra's, it could be a Transcendence, it could sure. go either way. I imagine if he's going down that tree, it will be Hydra's. Transcendence doesn't really scale as well on Robin as Vaporishko is going to use that teleport well for the first time yeah, maybe we've that's, seen That's ever. the right way to do it, right? Yes. <laughs> you don't want to use it to teleport into lane. Now your jump's down for three minutes. Use it to teleport out of danger. It's down for about 20 seconds now. It's going to be available for that next gank. Yeah, but hear me out, Mifflin. I don't want to miss half a wave walking back from base, right? Yeah, so played the lane better up to that point, <laughs> uh, and that wave won't be in your tower. I guess that's fair enough. And uh, they push Coast. A bit of props there for him using that teleport to get him out, get himself out to safety, rather. There was maybe a thought of a blue buff invade there from 60, but they're going to move themselves away. Maybe realizing that high central are going to rotate in. They are still even on gold, though. There are two kills on the board, but there's been enough farming and actually XP pretty close to even here as well. Are you surprised to see that, that Hive Central have gotten the first two kills on the board, but don't necessarily have a larger lead in this game just yet? This comes with the veteran shift that's coming out of the side of 60. These players have been playing competitively so much longer, and as Hindu said, we've been around for a long time. Yep. I don't know a single player on the side of Hive. These guys are largely untested. Oh, Dobson tries to move back beneath his tier one, but unfortunately doesn't find his way there. Watch Some out. good CC from Switch is going to knock up a few and stun them out underneath the tower. It doesn't come into fruition. And Alley there tries to send the Spirit of the Nine Winds through. Doesn't connect for much, but one more gank gone right for Hive Central, and the mid laner falls. We need Rico, and when I say we, 60 needs Rico to get involved finally. It looks like he's going to look to gank out this Hachimon. That's a hard to get gank. Yeah. Hachi's ult is available to just ride that horse out of danger. He does have the beads as well, and the Porsche Coast is low. This is a moment where you have to kind of wonder if that's something that could turn around. Instead, he's just going to secure the purple buff for his laner and then just move away out to safety. But free PC Gamer, he has pushed this lead that... His Daji kind of afforded him in this early game, and Vaporshko still fighting from behind and opting for kind of different paths on this build as well. You know, as flexible as Hunter builds are, Hachiman looking maybe into that Blood Force or Devourer's Gauntlet tree with Vaporshko, maybe looking for something a little bit different. I'll tell you right now, if that gauntlet turns into Devourer's Gloves, I'm going to go ahead and ban this kid from the competition. <laughs> that is a big no-no on Hachiman. You're going to want to look towards maybe a Transcendence for the damage, something like that. Devo's Gloves, just not as potent right now in general. So I Is think you were right to point out the Blood Forge. Blood Forge? No, Blood Forge, we're going to let him get away with 75 power as long with the shield as well, rushing into that lead, you know, to be able to <laughs> snowball a little bit more. But Devo's Gloves, on the other hand, we'll keep our eyes out for that. We'll have to check back in on that in a moment. Let's see if free PC gamer is going to be allowed to keep playing this one under the authority of Mifflin on the call. Hey, Borscht Coast looking to stay aggressive, though, and teleports Huge his way damage. in. Yeah, he does plenty of damage. No worries that you're a level behind. You have your boots completed, and technically, along the same lines, despite one level behind, as the builds stand, the Porsche Coast can trade pretty effectively. The Porsche Coast is going to trade effectively in just about anyone. Interesting to point out, this is the first time we might have seen him play on a PC instead of console as he gets uh, ganked no. out, but that teleport used again. Yes! We love that. Yeah, we, we love to see that. We love, that's a little bit longer than we'd like, but we still love it. <laughs>
Yeah, at that point, we're splitting hairs, right? He was able to get out <laughs> safely, and it wasn't from his Titan back into lane. So they Borsh Coast utilizing that crystal teleportation the way you'd want to be want to have it seen. The solo lane has been pretty quiet up to this point in Mifflin, eight and a half minutes into this game. We stand even outside of squares, able to capitalize on an assist thanks to some mid lane collapses there. This Osiris has not had a problem with Asamaterasu just yet. And Osiris has been an underutilized pick this season. He still is largely dominant in lane. He's got the constant poke in the one. He's got AOE autos to clear the wave easily. As well as now the Berserker's shield is a little bit better. He's going to see a slight buff. He can go either shield, but, you know, Berserker's is very good on him if he's able to bully out the enemy. He elects to go for the other one instead. That means that he knows that this Ama is not going to be looking to auto fight. And that's what we've seen. She's been playing largely passive in that lane. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, bud. Oh, bud. Oh, we, all right, I'll get to him on Twitter later. We'll fix that up. Oh, Doug, I love you. The timing of that was so perfect. He, <laughs> he did go into the Devourer's Gauntlet. Or maybe, all right, let's, let's cut him some slack. What are some merits of maybe moving into Devo's Gauntlet if you're Hachiman? Yeah, you know, it stacks power. It gives you lifesteal, but it could have been 75 power instantly as well as lifesteal instantly on the Blood Forge. It could have been even more mana and power out of Transcendence. But this man decided in Season 2 when Devo's gloves came out that he liked them and he's going to keep building them, I guess. We'll see if it pays off. And at the moment, it looks like he's going to be able to help out and do plenty of damage to this Gold Fury. Secure is through. Hive Central grabs it. Switch moves his way in. Plenty of stuns there. They push Coast capitalizes on a great setup from his Geb support. Pulled back in by Daji, free PC gamer. Snags the kill to return. Vape Porsche Coast nice finally ult. finishes off Kumba Karna. Persephone sends that ultimate out. Square is going to try to regress away from this one. Gold Fury was secured by Hive, but the fight, that goes the way of 63 kills on the board for them. That's a pretty big swig. They swing, rather. They keep themselves the gold lead. That might be the first time Rico's hit an enemy god. Let's hope he keeps that up going forward. Robin known for his early game. Not to say he's a slacker in the late, but certainly he does fall off. However, that lead that they got off the gold free was immediately eviscerated yep. by the fight. Now we're looking at 500 gold in favor of 60, as well as about 2,000 experience, which is a way bigger deal at this point in the game. Spot on there, Miff. 500 almost on the dot, 499, as you say it, just to be exact. So Hive Central, they kind of shrug off that early game differential. They're able to find themselves a fight that they're happy with. A lot of great setup there from Switch, who does end up falling, but that Geb ultimate so impactful when you find the right targets. And of course, Vaporish Coast on that Heimdall was there to pour out the damage and capitalize on the rest of the setup from his team. Still behind, technically in lane, but he will be able to go back, finish up some of those items, and that Heimdall is going to start to hit a little bit extra. Rico may be poking his head into the short lane for the first time this game, but squared is nowhere to be found. But you liked what you saw out of Rico in that last fight. Yeah, he got involved for the first time. Not even necessarily that he played it in t insanely well, but the fact that he was there makes me happy. Uh, it's worth pointing out that Vaporish Coast lost its beat there, so they could look oh, to fight there. Archie Instead, going to solo. She does get out alive, but is there enough damage? He's going to go up, give himself just a moment to think about what he wants to do, switch. He's going to use the ultimate just to buy himself some CC immunity, so he does not get pulled back in. Spear to the Nine wins, flies through, connects onto that Geb, who's still alive and still fighting here. Hive Central have lost the only member in this engagement. Rico, epic uppercutted, but drops right back down. The chase was on from 60, but they're going to take their kill onto Archie, take the speed buff, and go home. And, they, yeah, losing speed buff is huge. You lost your life and the most important buff in the game. At this point, there's not a single jungler that isn't sighing in the chat. <laughs> That's the worst feeling possible, and it's going to be so much harder for them to move forward now. Now that Robin's got a bit of a lead, two levels, in fact, he can look to go into that speed buff just about uncontested. He's so safe yep. with the jump on his ultimate and his overhead kick. Going to get him out with a beads Aegis combo, essentially. He could just go in on his own. He doesn't need his team to follow up him invading that speed in the future now that he has yep. timer. We wondered what he would build into. It was Transcendence, and it's almost fully stacked there for Rico, so plenty of damage to be had. Mid-Tier 1 tower for Hive Central, a stiff breeze away from being taken down, and the right side Tier 1 tower doesn't look like it's going to fare much better. So now you're kind of in a situation where if you're Hive Central, you, you had the lead early on, but it's really that Gold Fury fight where things start to swing. And now it's the map objectives, the, your team objectives between the towers that are going to start to worry a little bit. Those towers are starting to sweat. 
A lot of the lead on the side of 60 is coming out of the solo lane, so we won't see too much pressure coming out there. But the jungler being three levels up now, incredibly relevant. Yeah, great point. As Rico, despite being a touch slow in the early game, was able to now find a great impact and has farmed up. Look at his damage. Thanks and help to some of that speed buff confirm. Yeah, we say passive, but he's doubling the damage effectively from anyone else in this game. Mm. Yeah, that's, a, that's the wet noodle Robin. fight. But Robin, it works. yeah, 2.2k on the Robin, so low, so unfortunately low with an early game pressure. Osiris, on the other hand, 9,000. Oh, right. <laughs> Wet and noodle way, fighting. Right. <laughs> right, Rico, rather. Let me let me flip that around. It, it's Robin or Osiris in the in the uh, solo lane that has been able to find some great damage, and Amaterasu has not been able to really effectively trade back into that. We're not surprised to see the solo laners on top of the damage charts, but I am surprised that it's only one of the solo laners that high up. That's just showing how passive she's playing in lane, which I can't falter for. Fighting into Osiris is one of the hardest matchups, full stop. Not many solo laners can stand up to him. Yeah, no. Gods or players or anything like that, Osiris is incredibly dominant. You might want a King Arthur slotted over there to maybe contest that pressure a little bit, but instead we have Ama. She's going to be bringing a lot into the team fights, though. Switch is going to try to set up another fight for his team, and Dobson is going to capitalize. Archie, very low, gets some shielding up onto the pillar. He goes to extend his life one more time. Stuns up two, and 60 is here to try to move themselves back into this fight. Dobson with his second kill in this engagement. Phoenix dives into his Make passive. That's a double, but an unofficial three for the mid laner. Dobson is rotated into this fight at the perfect time, and it's only free PC gamer with a little bit of that lifesteal to keep him alive. Four members down. FG started at 15 minutes into this game. And it looks like it's going to be FG secured as Rico maybe is able to turn around the fifth and final member of Hive Central. But that is a no-go. Fire Giant will fall. And that's another big fight for 60. 14, now 15 minute Fire Giant straight into the Pyromancer. That's going to be a huge golden XP swing off the back of a four man kill white for the side of 60. Gold Fury still available. Just about every tower except for the tier one and mid still available. This is going to be a huge gold swing if Hive can't answer it. And it's 6,000 now where the gold stands and 10,000 experience as well. And I, I always like to ask so if you're 60 here, is this purely just let's brute force down some of these towers, extend this lead? They absolutely can. We saw the XP charts a moment ago. They're all incredibly ahead now, not only in XP, yeah. but also in gold. 10,000 experience at 15 minutes. That's, that's hefty. That's, that's a steep hill. That is an incredibly steep hill. They could elect to go down the long lane, push out every tower, work their way back towards the solo lane. Yep. Once they clear out all those towers after this Primal Fury, Fire Giant might be respawning. And with a lead that they should accumulate by that point, Fire Giant should go their way uncontested. They're going to have three minutes, or two minutes rather. That's exactly no three minutes on that Fire Giant buff before it goes down, and then a minute on the respawn timer. Yeah, the steep hill is pretty well indicated by the graphs. There is the only, I, I would call it, even XP is in that Hunter role where Vaporish Coast, at least just for a moment ago, is like half a level behind. So free PC gamer. If nothing else, has done a good job. He's 2-0-1, easily the best slash line on his team. The Hachiman has kept farming and kept even with the Heimdall on the other side. Unfortunately, with that farm, he elected to throw a dart at the item screen and just built a pretty poor build. He may die again. His switch rolls through, has his ultimate. It's just going to knock him up instead in free PC gamer. He's going to get that XP lead wiped off of the map, and that's going to be left side tier one tower that falls as well. So there is a tier one tower still in the right lane for 60 to capitalize on, but well timed to gank there. But that does tee off for High Central that there's maybe a number mismatch in the middle lane. They're just going to give up this tier two tower for free as well. Great rotations from 60 is going to set up a kill and a couple of towers. They also pressured up the minion wave in mid, so they've got a clear rotation pack for additional objectives, permanent objectives in these towers, but free PC gamer falling there, yeah. that's, un that's you can't, that's unacceptable. Sure. You can't be picked out at this point. You know they have Fire Giant. You know that that's probably the first place they're going to go is the long lane. You shouldn't be sitting in your tier one. It's not safe. He does still have both of his relics available. Couldn't quite catch the cooldowns just prior to that fight, but still both are ready at least post-fight. So at 18 minutes in, 60 have extended that lead to now about 11,000 gold. And all five members far and away ahead of experience. 
Hive Central, they might just have to take these on the chin and, and pray that you get a good fight underneath the Phoenix. That's just about all they can do. This gold lead is becoming so huge, and it's only going to continue to grow as they barrel down the short lane now. I love it when I say something and it comes true. They did yeah, the great, towers in the it? order that I wanted them to. They're playing perfectly. It might come from the fact that I have experience playing against these guys back on the box days. Right, However, because they Porsche Coast Penta killed you, right? That's yeah. the experience you have against these guys? Yeah, well, I won the game, Dolson. I won the game after okay, that. All right, well, you know that That is an important note to add on there. Maybe you get Penta killed, but you still win the game. So you concede on one hand, but you win on the other, and that's going to be the final tower on the map taken down. Hive Central, only the three Phoenixes separating their exit from the SCC qualifiers. 60, a team that I think, to be fair, as we've pointed out a couple of times, just by name recognition alone, probably had the edge going into this matchup. Yeah, I had to study up on these teams going in so I would have some talking points, and uh, these guys don't even have wiki pages yet, so I bet they're just happy to be here. Sure. And you know what? They've made it pretty far into these quarters now. If they win this game, it would be miraculous, but they're playing against some strong contenders. I can't be disappointed with their overall performance. Yeah, that's going to be quite the swoop if they're able to come back into this one. At 20 minutes, Fire Giant will be up. In another 50 seconds, so the buff has fallen off all five members of 60. And at, at this point, I imagine if you're 60, you've got such a lead that you're just going to wait until this FG respawns and then start to knock down some of these Phoenixes. And that FG should go uncontested. Worth pointing out now that they don't have any vision on the map, but they don't really need it. If the enemy team in Hive moves in towards the Fire Giant, that's nearly a death sentence. I don't imagine they leave that Phoenix line for at least another 20 minutes, sure. assuming that their Titan isn't dead by then. Yeah, I'm not excited to step a toe outside of my base into any area that has no vision if I'm Hive Central. And 60 are probably sensing that. They're going to have a little bit deeper ward coverage should they choose. They only have a couple on their side. There is some warding from Hive Central, so they at least know that 60 is going to attempt this. But I agree with you. I don't think you leave your base and even try to take this fight. Because at 20 minutes in, those death timers are going to be long enough. You're going to lose a whole lot if you get swept in a team fight. Likely the game. However, it's not all doom and gloom for Hive. They have a, an incredible defense comp. Kukul Khan's gonna be able to drop the Spear of the Nine Winds and the Tornadoes to keep the minions out. And it's such a huge damage output, regardless of the fact of that huge XP and gold deficit, he's still gonna be chunking. He elected for the Breastplate of Valor. It's gonna mesh well with his passive, but it's not the damage that you'd expect to get out at this point. No penetration online. Yeah. So you know what? I take back what I said. They don't have any silver linings. <laughs> uh, good luck, Hive. Build better in the future. I'm yeah. disappointed. Why? Do you, why? I mean, obviously, you, you sort of point out the way some of that synergizes into his build. In, in an ideal world, do you move more into penetration with an item like that? So penetration, the later the game goes, is more important. But penetration, especially when you're at a deficit, is important. Because sure. you're going to get that passive defense just from leveling up on the side of 60, as well as defense sure. within their builds. You have zero pen right now. How are you going to deal any damage? It doesn't matter that you have a lot of power coming out of your passive. It's not getting through the armor. It's true. I mean, outside of that fully stacked Book of Ta, and I guess technically his boots, and then the tier two book on the end of his build there. No real full build damage items just yet. You do have five full members on the FG. And left side Phoenix is maybe the first target here. But this is where we see some games start to stall out. At least the last game, yes, you know, there, there was a tough time trying to move in and get underneath those Phoenixes. But your, your lead may be so big here that you can easily win a fight Phoenix or not. They should be able to walk in as long as they send their tanky targets in first, which most teams that have been playing as long as they have should know how to do. It's going to be very easy, as well as Persephone poking from a range. Your Kukulkin's not even there yet to keep them out of the Phoenix. Things are looking bad for Hive. Yeah, and Vaporish Coast, he hurts, just in case you forgot. He has almost done all of the damage to that Phoenix and then chucked down a couple members of Hive Central down to half health. They're opting for a more split approach here. Send four members to the left side. Keep Rico there in that mid lane just to keep that lane pushing. It looks like maybe for the time being it pays off, but it's just going to kind of be jungler mirroring jungler. This time, though, they're going to send Ali to rotate over to mid, so there's an, a, a numbers discrepancy on the left-hand side of this map. 60 are going to chunk down the left-hand side. Phoenix just needs a couple more auto attacks. Good ultimate locks down squares here. Are they able to capitalize on the kill? Yes, they are. Dobson finds his fourth this game. Ali moving back into base. Titan is exposed. Minion wave pushing in mid, but... Hey, we don't need it when we're this far ahead. 
don't need it even a little bit. It's dropping fast, but Hive Central still has ultimates available to defend. Spear of the Nine wins drop now, finds nobody. Good luck, but it wouldn't have done damage anyway. Yeah, this could have been the fight that Hive Central needed. Instead, they find nobody except melted down health bars. They are going to be able to backpedal back into base. Flying on through, Squares still back on respawn. Phoenix down into his passive. That's the Heimdall ult that knocks him up, but free PC Gamer is gonna trade back out onto one, so that is switch. Your support is down. You have your solo laner respawning here soon. Two Phoenixes down, a kill on the board, and 60 now turn their sights to the right lane. They might elect to back off here, but I do imagine you are correct that they will go for right lane. Look at uh, Kakulkin's Tornado's ticking away on that wave there. Uh, it's not exactly doing much, is it? Yeah, Persephone. Shrugs off that damage and sends her ultimate flying right on through. Right side Phoenix is going to go down very shortly. Archie destroyed by Dobson there. That is the fifth kill for that Persephone. Spear of the Nine wins. Doesn't find any targets. Wouldn't have found much anyway. Ali falls as a double kill for the Persephone. Square moves back into base. Phoenix dive back off of respawn is going to try to save this game, but that's the big punch up into the sky. They've maybe gotten the kill on a Persephone, but she can still turn around and do some good damage. It is a two for two. Titan under attack. Dobson, that passive will time out here shortly. It looks like Turtle is just going to stay in range. But three Phoenixes down. Titan still technically standing. In the six or seven years Smite has been going on competitively, no one, maybe twice, people have come back from three Phoenixes down. Uh, oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, I thought they were going to be maybe be able to finish off the kill there, and Turtle gets himself out. But Vaporish Coast, you got a Heimdall free firing in your back line. He might just solo everybody. That's a double kill. Could make it a triple. At this point, you got 60 second, 35, 60, and soon to be respawning is that Kukul Khan knocked away yeet. as Vaporish go. Coast, rather. That's the big yeet. Daji down comes Good. crashing. Archie. That is all four kills in that last engagement for Vaporish Coast. The respawn timer's just too long. I don't imagine the Kukul Khan gets much done here in convincing oh, <laughs> Nice shot. Come on. The moment <laughs> I'm saying that, Vaporish Coast gets deleted. Now it's switched, but the rest of the team is there to try to work this Titan down. And it looks like they're going to be successful in doing that. 60 and 25 minutes. They're going to get this one done, and they move on to the semifinals. A clean, convincing win, 17 to 7, 20,000 gold. Yep. I mean, you tried, Hive. You did. It, the, the cards weren't in your favor, you know? Does that one really hinge on that Gold Fury fight where Hive is able to get the Gold Fury, but then they lose just way too much on the back end of it? That was the turning point, but Hive, the duration of the early game was in the driver's seat sure. as far as kills, but they weren't playing the map properly. All the gold was going the way of Vaporish Coast squad. I'm yep. going to call it that, too, because my man walked in alone at... Yeah, the late game and killed four on his own. That's why we call him the Penta Kid. Yeah, I guess technically you you die at the end of the game to the Kukul Khan ultimate, but you have in the meantime walked down four members of Hive, and just set your team up for success. It may be a foregone conclusion there, at that point. So not much to be looked at. There were some good ultimates in this early nice game. We, we talk about you know how this Dodge was able to put an early impact on this game, but that kind of melted away. And Dobson, I think. As much as we've talked about Vaporish Coast, this Persephone hit all of its marks. Yeah, Persephone was looking so strong. This ult particularly impressed me so much. It's not easy to weave that needle Oof. through all those walls, find the target directly, and, you know, results in a kill, likely. Yeah, goodbye squares, and he moves his way out of it, but does end up falling. And this is 10 minutes into this game. They are already fighting back in kind of the Tier 2 jungle side of Hive Central's map. And before that fight, it was 4-1 in, in favor of Hive, but yeah. look at that gold deficit, 3,000 already in favor of 60, and it's only growing from this point forward. The first 10 minutes, Hive was looking good. After that, not too much. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, despite that early lead, and I think Daji, as I kind of mentioned a moment ago, was able to kind of put a stamp on that early game. But the, uh, the unchecked Heimdall certainly reared his head, and I think that's probably the best example we'll get of why he's been so prioritized in picks and bans. Heimdall especially has a fantastic matchup in Daji. She has to teleport to that's him true. in order to deal her damage. My man just <laughs> the horn. You're knocked up. That's <laughs> two autos for free. Heimdall swinging hard. You're not recovering from that. Well, we, we maybe say there are some in-game decision-making issues there for Hive. If you look at picks and bans, you give away a Persephone and a Heimdall. Are, are you saying it might even root from that? It it could be. They, their picks and bans to were on it. totally fine. Sure. Hive got a Kakulkin out of it. I don't personally yeah. value Heimdall that high anymore. The sure. nerfs have been very effective in just really stopping That's that true. dominant pressure he's had.
That's very true, but Heimdall, he rears his head this time around. Vaporish Coast doesn't get the Penta, but an unofficial quad there to round this one out. They move their way on to the semifinals, which we will be broadcasting right after this.